Hello, everyone, and happy New Year's Eve. And so, in honor of being New Year's Eve, I'm, I'm going to make my last dream as something special. I am going to rank every Spider-Man movie from the very beginning to now. I, I'll be warned, I am very picky when it comes to this stuff. So, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below, in the live stream. <clears throat> live chat right on the right and if you want there's a link right here if you want to join now i i show you we we should get started on this but the, the, all right i'm gonna start at my number 11 and work my way up to the top the first movie i'm gonna say it's the one that i was hoping to like but it was ultimately let down by it and that is the venom sequel let there be carnage now going into this movie I was a little bit excited because you know Clint, Woody Harrelson's playing Cleus Cassidy, and he and the, and the Carnage should be looking tense. And uh, I thought it was gonna be more darker than the first one because the first one was a little too jokey. But then going in after going in after the movie, I felt a little bit disappointed because Carnage and Cleus Cassidy don't didn't feel like one and the same because both they're they're, they're a serial killer. And they spend too much time like falling over the screaming girl causes self scream. So in the comedy, it was still there. It was too overpaced. It felt really quick. I thought like it came out after a minute. But but Tom Hardy, he, he was fine. Not my favorite version of Venom. And uh, the supporting casting, I didn't care for. The post credits scene was cool at first, but then no the way home didn't give us the opportunity for that. Well, oh, no, my number 11 is about to be carnage. My number 10 is something that I think is really bad, and and I don't know how anyone can defend this movie, and that's The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And except one thing goes to mind, one thing that's just as bad as this piece of garbage. <laughs> that's, uh, and that's that. Uh, nothing goes with better than these movies with a uh, really bad script, Terrible pacing, terrible villains. Um, uh, but all in all, the action's good. Uh, uh, Emma, I like Emma Stone and Gwen Stacy, but uh, the music was fine. The swing was a good one. Just, uh, but Electro was really bad because they're acting like Jim Carrey Riddler. But terrible script, terrible acting, um, ter terrible pacing. All in all, this movie is really trash. I don't know how anyone could defend it. Next movie I'm going to talk about is the first movie in these two series that Andrew Garfield had, and that was The Amazing Spider-Man. Now, with this movie, when I went into it, this was like six years after they rebooted the movie with Spider-Man 3. And I thought at the time it was too soon because, because Spider-Man 3 ended up rough note, and they were going to have a Spider-Man 4, but it got canceled. So going into it, I, I thought, what, what's with the dark tone? Why are they retelling the origin story? But I went in with an open mind. And it wasn't bad as its sequel, but it still had its problems. I mean, Andrew Garfield at Spider-Man, he did a fine job with what he was given, but he didn't really fit who Peter Parker was. He was too cool. He was riding a skateboard for some reason. And But the action felt pretty cool, and he had some pretty decent swinging scenes. And I think the only good thing coming out of these two movies were Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. I think she, she did a really good representation of the character. When it comes to the villain... The lizard Kirk Connors was very bland and not like the famous comic book character because his plan was to like turn the city into lizards. It's it's the same generic plan on like a top of the Oscorp Tower, and it's uh, this, that's the other thing. These two movies were supposed to stop the Sinister Six, but it, after the failure of the second movie, it bombed. That's supposed to show you can't just cram all the things into a second movie. But it was fine for what it is. Now. The next one I'm going to talk about was a movie, a part of, of Sony's Spider-Man universe, and that's Venom. When this came out, a lot of people thought this movie did a better job of training Venom than how it originally did. I thought it was just weird because, sure, he's big and he's got the we are Venom, but it, it, this version of Xbox is too goofy, too over the top. I don't know, I don't know why, because he... He doesn't have Spider-Man here because the Venom symbiote is connected to Spider-Man. Because this movie was not needed. Because having Venom without Spider-Man does not work. 
I still think Tom Hardy did a good job as Eddie Brock, but the comedy and the f- pacing fell flat. The villain was boring. I mean, Riot? Who, who comes up with that with Riz Ahmed? I mean, it's weird. The action was good, but the supporting cast was bad. If this film wasn't a thing for Sony's Marvel Universe, I would not complain. Now, the next movie I'm going to talk about might piss off. This might be a little bit controversial choice. So don't come at me, MCU, MCU fans, but this is just my opinion. So my number seven is Spider-Man Homecoming, the first movie in the Tom Holland movies. Now, before you, before, you, before you type on your keyboards, hear me out. When I first saw this movie, I, I enjoyed it. The Spider-Man, the MCU, I thought it was great. But looking back on it, it doesn't really feel like Spider-Man to me because it doesn't, sure, you, you don't need your spider bite or Uncle Ben, but I feel like Uncle Ben never even existed in this movie, in this universe, and they tied to this version of Spider-Man too much to the Avengers and Tony Stark. I mean, he's like, I want to be like you, well, but I'm not enough to sue. And um, to me, it felt more like Iron Man Jr. The, the, the story was okay. The cast was, I don't know, the cast, I didn't like. I mean, screw Ned. Uh, Flash Thompson it wasn't even remotely like the character. Zendaya is not Mary J. Watson. I don't know why they gave her MJ. I love Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, but his presence in the movie was not needed. But the one redeeming factor this movie was Michael Keaton as the Vulture. Man, can that man play intimidating? Like the scene where he gets into the car and says, I'll kill you and everyone you love. That was the only good thing in that movie. But I don't know. It's fine, but doesn't. it's not Spider-Man. Next movie on my list is the sequel of Homecoming, and it was a little bit better, but not too much, and that's Far From Home. Now, this came at, right after Avengers Endgame, so, so like I said before, it had way too much references to Iron Man, which I don't know why. I enjoyed this film for a while after it came out in 2019, but the film, but and just like with Michael Keaton, the redeeming factors movie is Jake Chill and all that Mysterio. That man can turn from a good guy to a villain on a dime like that. Um, besides, yeah, but, but I feel like with the uh, MCU villains, um, they're tied to, they became villains because Tony Stark, which I did not like, and all that. But I still think Jake Chill did a really good performance. Like the illusion scene was freaky as hell. Uh, but the comedy was too really bad. It was a, your classic road trip, which I did not need in Spider movie. You should have stayed in New York. Tom Holland was not acting like Spider Man because he's like, I don't, I don't want to fight this bad guy. I want to be, I want to talk to a girl. Sure, in Spider Man Two, he gave it up too, but that that's a way different movie that we'll get to later. But the movie is good, but it has really bad moments. Like, the, don't get me started on the relationship between Ned and Betty. Ugh. Movie on top of my number five is a movie I thought fixed uh, the Tom Holland Spider Man, but I'm still going to be cautious about, and that's the recent movie Spider Man No Way Home. Now, this movie I thought uh, I actually liked in Tom Holland's story. The action was intense, you can actually like pounding, and Tom gave a better performance in this movie than he did in the previous ones. Uh, it was funny. They added Charlie Cox as Daredevil as a cameo. I thought that was cool. But I did have a few issues with the movie, like having the hot, the hot Aunt May say the famous line that Uncle Ben says really bugged me there. I, st- I don't like Nan and MJ. They're not good as like Harry Osborne and Mary Jane. But to me, seeing how this movie brought back the, the, the characters from the previous franchises really made my day because. Willem Dafoe, I mean, hats off to Willem Dafoe, that man can act, uh, how he can turn on a dime of being Norman Osborn in the Green Goblin, that dude is terrifying with this, but with that hideous smile, that dude stole the show with his performance as the Goblin, Alfred Molina, he was great as, as always, Thomas Incher, sure, they didn't bring him on the set, but I thought it was fun, and when they brought back my boy Toby McGuire. I was clapping in the theater saying, Yeah, he's back. And he him and Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland really play well off each other with their different takes on their stories. And um Yeah, but all these these three Spider Man's do they do really good off each other. Like and like with my back and the organic webs, 
And in the scene where we have to- Toby's Peter reunited with Octavius with that famous recognizable score by Danny Elfman, uh, really hit me in the feels. Although well, no, I think this movie was the best of the MCU friend of Spider-Man. Now, my number four pick is another controversial kind of choice because I know how much people love the shit on this movie, and that's Spider-Man 3. Now, with this movie, I know I know many people love the shit on this movie for how bad it is with the emo dancing and the Fatuma non the Venom. But to me, I think this movie is underrated and doesn't deserve the hate. Sure, it's got flaws. Like the retcon of the Sandman killing Uncle Ben, which I did, which was not needed. It was done fine in the first movie, but I think there was a good end to the Sam Raimi trilogy because this movie was all about forgiveness, and you can tell in that scene where he tells Sandman, "I forgive you." Harry, his best friend, had a great arc that was built up from the first movie of him getting revenge for his father's death, and his death scene really hit me, where he's like, "You're my best friend." How he dies to say, "Peter." And I think the Sandman, played by Thomas St. Church, did a really good performance. Like, this transformation scene with building up on the sand, looking at the picture of his daughter. That really good, was really good. Now, with Venom, I think this was, sure, this Venom's not too small. It's over grace. always kept peeling the face back. But I thought this was a little bit more closer to what the comics take of the character was. With his hatred for Peter, the Daily Bugle, and get, becoming Venom at the church. And some of those scenes could be really freaky, like the with the screeches, rah, and all that. But, like I said, I think this, this movie, and yes, I did a few times, like the dancing. It's funny sometimes. But, all in all, I think Spider-Man 3 is a good, underrated movie and should be appreciated more. Sure, it may have killed the franchise, but I thought it was fine. Now, my number three is the one that started it all in the one movie I grew up with as a kid, and that's the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man from 2002. Now, this movie, this was fantastic. One of the greatest origin stories uh, I've ever seen in a superhero movie, showing how Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man with the spider bite, with great power, comes great responsibility. It follows the classic comic stories from Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, Peep for Beat, even with the wrestling ring. I love the cast with uh, Kirsten Dunst and Mary Jane, uh, James Franco's Harry Osborn. Willem Dafoe was fantastic as the Green Goblin. Sure, his suit may look like a Power Ranger, but I thought it looked, looked creepy still. Tobey Maguire, in my opinion, is the perfect casting as Peter Parker Spider-Man, a shy, nerdy geek picked on by the bullies who, who, becomes, his, who becomes a superhero to learn, learn responsibility. The action is intense, like the final fight scene where the Green Goblin kick in Spider-Man's ass, and he's all bloody. And that you wouldn't see those kind of things back in, in nowadays. And the, the iconic soundtrack by Danny Elfman is fantastic. I can listen to it every day, especially with the hero, the white nickel bag. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I love this movie. Great way to start off Spider-Man, and one of the greatest origin movies ever made. My number two is an anime movie that won Best Anime Feature in 2018 at the Oscars, and that's Into the Spider-Verse. Now, this movie I did not see coming. Everything about this film is amazing. The art style <laughs> looks like a comic book. The story and the action was intense. I like the dynamic between Peter B. Parker and Miles and how they were between the mentor and the mentee. And I like how it shows what, what makes you different, makes you Spider-Man. I think the, the, the other versions, like with Nicolas Cage as Spider-Man Noir is hilarious. The Spider-Pig. The villains were great, too, like the Kingpin and the Lady Dr. Octavius. Everything about this movie um, was great, and I cannot wait for the sequel to come out next year with where it has more versions of Spider-Man, including 2099. And we'll see what that when the sequel comes. And now... On to my number one pick. I know this might be an obvious answer, but can you blame me? My number one pick is what many consider to be the greatest, one of, one of the greatest superhero sequels of all time, and that's Spider-Man 2. Yes. The one with Dr. Octopus played by Alfred Molina. This movie is fantastic. This is what a Spider-Man movie should be. 
I really like how human they make Peter Parker, showing the balancing of being a normal guy and being a superhero. I love the chemistry between Peter has with Mary Jane and his friend Harry. It's got great action, like that iconic train scene, and how we use practical effect for that. And Alfred Molina as Dr. Octopus is one of the greatest comic book movie villains because you can sympathize with, with how he just wants to do his life's work and how he lost his wife, Rosie. And Alfred Molina really shows the, how the good, great sympathetic a villain can be. <laughs> and all in all, Spider-Man 2 and, um, is, is, is this perfect on many means, and this is one of the greatest Spider-Man movies ever made. And that's my ranking. I love, uh, that's how I feel for the different takes on Spider-Man. And I like to thank you all for coming today. And uh, if you, what's your ranking for the Spider-Man movies? Leave it in, in the comment section below, and get a, leave a like. And hope you enjoyed the video. And hope to see you all again next time. Bye bye. Hey, thank you so much for all your help today. Now it's time for so long, but we'll sing just one more song. Thanks for doing your part, you sure are smart. You know with me and you, and my dog Blue, we can do anything that we wanna do. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Thanks.